I have prepared this lecture for, um, for some other um, conferences where I was, was asked to speak about, uh, about this. And um, after having met uh, some of uh, my Russian colleagues at the Nevsky Forum and I understood there are so many questions, I suggested that maybe it might be of interest to discuss this and to present it. We know that gallium uh, PSMA imaging of the prostate cancer has taken up an enormous amount of enthusiasm because there was finally a good um, imaging modality to assess prostate cancer, not only a diagnostic, but, uh, but over uh, through follow-up for the treatment management, for the treatment monitoring. And it has been a, a very enthusiastic acceptance by the, by the, by the oncological community. But as it always happens, the more you do, the more you understand. And uh, therefore, we now need to understand what our possibilities and limitations are with this, with this agent. Furthermore, there are today uh, uh, also capabilities to, um, to uh, label PSMA with technetium, which might increase the <coughs> might increase the um, potential customers and users of these modalities through spectity. And therefore, even more is, in my opinion, the uh, good knowledge of the, um, the capabilities and limitations of PSMA imaging important. I'm not going to go into many details regarding the, the uh, basic sciences or the basis for the development of uh, PSMA. Uh, I do believe that most of us um, know them already. Um, what we know is that PSMA is taken up uh, by, um, by uh, the uh, cell surface transmembrane glycoproteins in prostatic tissue and that, um, that it uh, is overexpressed in most prostatic uh, cancer uh, cells up to 1,000 times the normal as compared to the normal uh, the prostatic tissue. It is uh, associated, uh, of course, like most of the agents that we used, with the aggressiveness uh, of the disease and therefore has its um, prognostic relevance. Um, based on uh, the procedure guidelines that have been um, published by the ENM and uh, SNM, uh, PSMA is today used at various stage, uh, stages of the disease, um, the, um, at the staging uh, mainly of high-risk disease, uh, with um, uh, an impact on overall survival that he still has to be um, uh, proven in large uh, patient series. Um, in mainly the most studies have been done in patients with biochemical uh, recurrence and um, low PSA values. Um, PSMA is also used for targeting biopsy, for monitoring response to treatment, and um, uh, in metastatic uh, castration-resistant um, prostate cancer uh, for um, um, tailoring radioligand uh, treatment. The protocol for gallium uh, is uh, there is no specific patient preparation. The patient needs good uh, hydration. The value of uh, diuretics is, um, is um, debated. Uh, we inject up to 2.2 um, megabecquerels per uh, kilo. Uh, the uptake time is appro approximately one hour. There is some debate whether um, delayed imaging is needed, but it depends on uh, how busy the department is. Uh, positioning is very important, especially when the study is done for radiation treatment planning. Is the usual field of view and the acquisition time. When we look at the physiologic biodistribution of gallium P PSMA, the highest uptake is, of course, in the prostate. The very high uptake is also present in the kidneys and bladder because of urinary excretion and in salivary glands, moderate uptake in uh, spleen, liver, and lacrimal glands, and some uh, low-intensity variable uptake in the bowel, gallbladder, and sympathetic chain. The, uh, the physiologic, uh, these are some examples of physiologic PSMA uptake. This one is in a patient um, who uh, had biochemical failure. The uptake was seen in the gallbladder, you can see it here, and it is seen here, but uh, with no further uh, gallbladder-related pathology. 
This is uh, something that has been uh, largely discussed mainly in case reports, in uh, uptake in, uh, in ganglia, uh, in uh, sympathetic ganglia. This is uptake in the cellular ganglia. This is uptake in the stalate, uh, stellate uh, ganglia in the cervical thoracic location. And this is uptake in a trigeminal uh, ganglia. Um, what can be the patterns and pitfalls of, um, of PSMA uptake in patients when we image patients with pro prostate cancer? First of all, we have to be very clear after experience of thousands of patients in overall over the world, this is not a magic bullet. We know that there are false negative studies that are related to uh, no significant uh, PSMA overexpression in up to 15% of primary tumors. In, there is no uptake in prostate tumors with neuroendocrine differentiation. As always, in very small tumors, in lesions that are very closely located to high activity in the urinary bladder, in metastasis in the liver, also because the high uptake in, of the PSMA physiologic uptake in the liver, and in metastasis uh, later during the course of disease when they lose the avidity. The problem is mainly the false positives, and these are many various benign processes. Sarco uh, granulomatous diseases and specifically sarcoidosis, benign tumors of neurogenic origin such as meningiomas, schwannomas, peripheral nerve shell tu uh, sheet tumors, adrenal adenoma, hemangioma and hemangioendothelioma, benign bone lesions, inflammatory processes, and soft tissue lesions. Everything, everything that we can think of. A few examples, a patient with PSMA uptake in a meningioma, um, then, um, then we have uptake of PSMA in malignancies that are not prostate cancer, and those that have been mostly discussed uh, lately are renal cell carcinoma and hepatocellular carcinoma, but you can see that there is a large variety of malignancies that can take up uh, PSMA. Uh, and these are a few examples from our clinic. This is uptake in a patient uh, with prostate cancer um, in whom we see this error of uptake in the cervical nodes um, as well as in the supraclavicular nodes. Um, we were not sure that this represents metastasis from prostate cancer and indeed uh, tissue sampling, ultrasound guided FNA indicated that it was metastatic papillary thyroid cancer. A patient who had prostate cancer after radiotherapy uh, on a, f a follow up a PSA of uh, 0.29, follow up uh, on MRI showed three focal lesions in the right lobe of the liver. Um, there was uh, uptake of PSMA. Biopsy, the first biopsy was done only uh, guided by MRI and it, was, uh, it showed only fatty liver and portal fibrosis. The second biopsy was guided by uh, PSMA findings and indicated the presence of hepatocellular carcinoma. And there is a very nice paper coming from um, Israel. Uh, from Tel Aviv, uh, recently in the late uh, 2018 in the JNM, showing that the gallium PCMA is definitely superior to FDG imaging in hepatocellular carcinoma, and this opens some therapeutic um, options in, um, in such an aggressive and um, a tumor with um, a poor prognosis. And this I put uh, on because um, I think we should uh, discuss this. This is just a case report uh, coming from Turkey, if I'm not mistaken, in the clinical nuclear medicine, who shows uh, various cases of, um, of, a, of tumors, not prostate cancer, uh, uh, taking up a PSMA, esophageal cancer, urinary bladder, breast, glioma, and thyroid cancer. And he thinks, or he at least asks, the author at least asks whether it has time to remove the PS prostate specific from the name of this tracer. Um, so let's now look at various scenarios and um, uh, patterns that we can see. 
Um, this, uh, when we look at the local tumor, I think that everybody who works with prostate cancer knows this, um, this uh, stage, this, this staging. Um, a few examples of uh, patterns of uh, PSMA uptake in the primary tumor. This is a very high uptake in a large tumor involving the entire gland. This is uptake in a small, um, uh, also not so of so high intensity, in a small subcapsular primary in the mid left lobe. And this is a multifocal tumor uh, where the, uh, the um, uh, prostate cancer is located in both lobes of the uh, prostate. And uh, we can also use uh, PSMA uh, PET CT to look at, um, uh, at, the at the local extent of, the, of prostate cancer. Also, definitely MRI is the primary modality that should be used. Here we see um, uptake in the right lobe, but also a very small, I hope you can see it, you can see it bet better here maybe, in a seven millimeter paraprostatic uh, lymph node. This is another pa uh, patient where we have uptake in the, um, in the um, primary tumor in the, uh, in the right uh, lobe of the prostate, but also uptake, uh, the, the fact, uh, we see the fact that the tumor is involving the seminal vesicles. And this is um, another patient where the primary tumor is clearly seen involving the rectum. So uh, when we deal with, um, with, lo uh, with local recurrence of prostate cancer, as in this patient, uh, we can see here uh, one example of uptake in a recurrence involving uh, both seminal vesicles. This was not known prior, and based on this study, the patient was referred to radiotherapy. And this is another patient uh, where we see this area of faint uptake in an area that had been previously uh, treated with brachytherapy. And um, the uptake was not of very high intensity. Um, the, we refer the patient first of all to biopsy and following this, uh, this uptake, uh, this, um, the, 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 the final diagnosis, he was again referred to radiotherapy. There can be uh, pitfalls in the when we look at the, um, uh, when we look for prostate cancer primary or recurrence in the pelvis related to uptake in the ureter in the urethra, which can be either focal small or more enlarged when the urethra is dilated, uh, and there can be also uptake in um, in other um, in other um, uh, processes. Like uh, here, we have a uh, pilonidal uh, sinus, an infected one that takes up uh, PSMA um, in, um, in uh, the proximity of the primary tumor in the prostate. PSMA uptake in lymph nodes, we know that we see them, uh, we have the advantage of detecting small volume metastasis as compared to CT or MRI. Uh, in the pelvic or in the region of the pelvis, uh, the um, uh, distant lymph nodes, uh, the um, uh, lymph nodes that are involved are mainly the internal and external iliac, the common uh, iliac and obturator and presacral. Distal lymph nodes are mainly located in retroperitoneal, supradiaphragmatic or other extra pelvic um, 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 uh, nodal groups. Um, in the pelvis, the, in order of frequency, uh, the first one of the uh, most, most commonly involved are the uh, nodes located in the obturatory fossa. Um, as we can see here, uptake in a five uh, millimeter left obturatory uh, lymph node, followed by external, internal, common, iliac, and presacral nodes. When we look uh, in the, again in the, um, in the pelvic uh, area or um, not only in the pelvis, but abdominal pelvic region, some more examples of uptake in a pararectal metastasis and uptake in a presacral small metastasis. You can see the size of all these metastatic lymph nodes. 
um, how, how does this impact on patient management? In this patient, for example, who had had uh, multifocal prostate cancer, when now had um, uh, biochemi suspected biochemical, no, he had the biochemical recurrence because uh, PSA was 0.41. Uh, the PSMA was the only modality to um, detect and localize and uh, left external lymph nodes, eight millimeters in size. The patient was referred with, uh, to radiotherapy, which was uh, successful. Uh, abdominal uh, uh, pelvic lymphadenopathy can also occur, and we see it more and more uh, since we do whole body PSMA imaging. Uh, this is a patient uh, at uh, staging, PSA 22, Gleason score 8. We see the uptake in the primary tumor, and we also see uptake in metastatic lymph nodes um, up to 18 millimeters inside in the iliac and paraortic uh, region. And also note that we see uh, uptake of lower intensity in the mediastinum, and we reported them at, as reactive mediastinal lymph nodes. Um, when uh, this paper is very important because it took a large number of very uh, good, highly respected uh, experts in reading PSMA studies, and they all looked for criteria for interpretation of these studies. And when they looked at lymph nodes, they found a number of issues. First of all, that in the, lock, in the pelvis, it was difficult to differentiate between obturator and iliac lymph nodes and between rectal and presacral lymph nodes. And to the best of my understanding for surgeons, this is a, an important difference. And also looking at the distant lymph node metastasis, there was dif difficult to, uh, to agree on the interpretation on the significance of uptake in abdominal and bronchopulmonary lymph nodes. Um, so um, let's look at a few common or un as well as unusual location of prostate cancer metastasis. And we all uh, base our knowledge on a study that was published almost 20 years ago, looking at, um, at uh, autopsy results, where they found that the most common atypical sites of prostate metastasis were in the lungs, liver, adrenals, and supradiaphragmatic uh, supra lymph nodes. The nodal metastases were always associated with uh, bone metastases. A few examples, a patient with um, recurrent prostate cancer who also had um, recurrent, uh, has a retrocural lymph node metastasis. An other patient with metastatic disease below the diaphragm showing uh, metastasis uh, in the um, cervical uh, and supraclavicular uh, lymph nodes. Um, another problem is uptake of uh, PSMA in lung nodules. We see here this patient who, um, where we can diagnose the, um, the um, uptake of PSMA in a, in a new uh, right uh, lymph node, as well uh, in a new right uh, lung uh, nodule, as well as uptake in um, metastatic um, in metastatic um, hilar nodes. Um, we we were not sure whether this was a second primary or whether this was um, metastasis from prostate cancer. We referred the patient to biopsy and these were prostate cancer metastases. And it has been shown already in the literature that in patients with prostate cancer and uh, lung nodules, uh, we should not relate on SUV to discriminate between pulmonary metastases and second primary lung cancer. Um, th there can be also diffuse lung uptake, as we can see in these examples. In this patient, it was a patient with a pulmonary congestion, and in this patient, it was a, uh, uh, he had a, uh, he had a, had a recent uh, pneumonia, and we can see the uptake. And I told you that uptake in, uh, in the mediastinum, sometimes you can report it mainly when the uptake is um, of moderate intensity. You can report it and you should report it as reactive nodes. But sometimes when the uptake is higher, as in this patient, we should know our limits and refer to a tissue biopsy before making the diagnosis of reactive lymph nodes. 
uptake of PSMA in liver metastasis, one of the sites, visceral sites where prostate cancer can, um, uh, can metastasize, as we can see uh, in this patient, but we can also see PSMA uptake in uh, liver hemangioma, as in this patient, or as in this patient, where it is actually, there is no pathology in the liver, but there was uh, fatty liver and sparing of liver tissue uh, only in, um, in a small segment of normal uh, liver tissue, which appeared relatively increased in almost one of the liver segments. Uh, this is uh, one of uh, our more really unusual cases. A patient who had had the multifocal prostate cancer, PSA 10, who had had prostatectomy and had rising PSA up to 26, but he also had melanoma with lung metastasis and non-Hodgkin lymphoma. We saw this area of uptake, which we could localize by PET-CT to the testicle, the patient that had melanoma, I remind you. So we really didn't know what, um, what to, um, what to, uh, what, how to report it. Again, uh, this patient was referred to ultrasound, who showed the same findings in the testicle. He was referred to orchiectomy, and it was a metastasis from prostate cancer. Um, nothing is simple. This is a patient with widespread extensive metastatic involvement, but we saw these areas of uptake, which was very unusual in the, um, uh, in the left upper femur, I should say, around the, the hip, uh, the hip joint, and it turns out that he had had a pathological fracture of the femur, which had been um, uh, surgically repaired, and during surgery, some uh, soft tissue implants, malignant soft tissue implants uh, occurred. Uh, bone metastasis, patterns and pitfalls. Um, this is something that um, it is not difficult to make the diagnosis of bone metastasis here, but the important thing is uh, that we should be aware when there is involvement of uh, the spinal canal and um, uh, foramina, because this indeed needs a different uh, urgent uh, surgic, um, treatment approach to the best of my understanding. We should also be aware that there can be uh, PSMA uptake in benign bone lesions, like in a healing rib fracture or in an osteophyte. This we can usually, uh, what can help us in these cases is the fact that we can define the process on the CT component. Here we have uptake of PSMA in Paget's disease. This is uh, important because Paget's occur more common in elderly men as such uh, and the same uh, is true for prostate cancer and this is uptake, faint uptake in fibrous dysplasia in a rib. Uh, also we can see uptake in sacroiliitis, in arthritic changes in the shoulder or in the hip. After treatment uh, we know that there are many treatment options today for prostate cancer um, and um, we play a role in making, I mean, we as a profession, as imaging uh, experts, play a role in defining how to treat the patient and how to monitor response to treatment. This is a patient with biochemical figure. We saw the uptake, the recurrence in prostate cancer in the prostate and lymph nodes and in the bone, the patient was referred to chemotherapy and our modality was also used to monitor the response to treatment, which in this particular case was, there was no response. We see here clear treatment, uh, treatment progression, uh, disease progression, sorry. Again, after treatment, there can be pitfalls. We can see uptake in an area of surgery we can see uptake uh, in, uh, in an area of surgery that was unrelated to, um, to uh, the prostate cancer. It was a surgical repair of, the, uh, hiat of an inguinal hernia. We can see uptake in inflammatory uh, changes after brach brachytherapy, in addition to the local recurrence here, which is much more intense in, um, in uptake. Um, a few more um, samples of uh, 
pitfalls in various organs. When we look uh, to, the, to the skull, um, to the area of the head and neck, we can see uptake in inflammatory skin lesions. We can see uptake in an inflammatory process following a dental procedure. We can see uptake in accessory spleen, and we, this is a case where we saw uh, uptake in a um, uh, peristaltic uh, region in the ureter. Uptake along the esophag esophagus, like in esophagitis, uptake in chronic gastritis, focal uptake, very, very um, dangerous to report. So um, uh, this is the, how reporting of PSMA should be done. Um, and uh, this is again a very important uh, review for those who enter uh, prostate cancer imaging. Um, there are cases of uh, disagreement when, subtle, when abnormalities are subtle or in problematic sites, mainly after treatment. Um, everybody seems to, uh, to try to avoid false negatives so that we do not miss cancer, but false positive can also be potentially harmful if we overinterpret because um, patients may be denied potentially curative uh, treatment. Um, th this uh, I'm not going to go into that. Uh, whoever is interested in, in going into PSMA study imaging, I suggest to read uh, this, um, this review, this study very carefully. Um, just to show you that we did a study again comparing our results to um, autopsy data that I have uh, mentioned previously. And uh, we have found um, that uh, there were 72% uh, percent of uh, positive studies in a group that included over 400 uh, patients. And um, the distribution of gallium PSMA was similar to previous autopsy data. Uh, and therefore, it, was, it is our... Um, our um, uh, conclusion that uh, we have reached a point where, where gallium PSMA should be included in guidelines in spite of the fact that I have shown you all these um, potential pitfalls, we just should know that there are cases when we should be clear and there should be cases when we, we should recommend tissue sampling. Thank you very much for your attention.